Hello, my name is Chris Spence. I work in technology development for the um, computational lithography part of ASML, also known as Brian. And it's my pleasure today to share some work that I've done with my colleagues, Adam Lyon, Tom Wallow, and Max DeLong, um, on contour-based mass metrology being used to quantify both mask errors and also their impact on the wafer. I'd like to start with a summary of the main things that I would like to present. I believe that mask contributions to wafer EPE are significant and that we need good mask metrology to drive correction. People are familiar with CDU and placement metrology on reticles, but what I'd like to focus on today is more on local measurements, such as proximity effects, LCDU and local placement errors, and corner rounding. And it's my contention that contour-based mass metrology, such as ASML's MXP, is required to characterize and model these advanced masks. And furthermore, that a close integration with OPC tools or simulation tools uh, can enable a rapid quantification of the errors on the mask and also the impact on the wafer. In the presentation today, I will be drawing on material that has been, uh, some of the, which has been previously published. The first part will cover uh, contour-based mask metrology to improve MPC models. The second part will look at the impact of mask errors on the wafer. And the third part will be characterizing curvilinear masks. This is work that has not yet been published. So let's start with a discussion of contour calibration for MPC models. So let's remind ourselves of why we care about mask proximity effects. Until recently, DPV lithography was the workhorse and because of the limits of the numerical aperture, the minimum pitch printed had remained fairly constant at around about 80 nanometers, meaning 320 nanometers on the mask. With the advent of EUV, we're now able to print much smaller and pitches below 40 nanometers or 160 nanometers on the mask are now possible. What we see is when we look at the regions of interest is that for deep UV, the um, curve is relatively flat and that no MPC correction is really needed. However, when we look at EUV, we see that we've now moved into a rapidly changing part of the proximity curve and in fact, MPC is advisable. Of course, uh, with MPC, we can greatly flatten those curves and you see the results here. And we go from a range without MPC of in the order of 16 nanometers to around four nanometers uh, after MPC. Four nanometers, particularly four nanometers at the mask, seems like a relatively small error given the mask reduction. Unfortunately, because of the poor contrast, there is a mask error amplification or mask error enhancement factor, or MEF, which means that actually the impact on the wafer may be larger than we think. I'm showing here a study that was done, presented at Bacchus in 2018 by my colleague David Rio, in which he looked at a logic layout and, com and looked at the behavior of uh, 1D features, the uh, line space patterns indicated with the dark blue and line ends indicated by the, the light blue. In simulating their behavior, we see that the, the nils, or the slope of the image, is much lower for the tip-to-tip -tip features compared to the line space features. And that the MEF can be as high as six for the tip-to-tip -tip features and in the range of uh, two to three for the one uh, dimensional features. As a consequence, um, if we have a MEF of greater than four, a, four na a one nanometer error on the mask will result in a greater than one nanometer error on the wafer. And this is why even with the small numbers that I showed in the previous slide, we still need to be very careful about the MPC accuracy and we really need to drive it down to even lower numbers. 
Since mass proximity correction and optical proximity correction, or OPC, are very similar, it seems that it would be instructive for us to look at best practices for OPC and see how we can apply them to MPC. In this slide, I want to go over the use of our contour-based metrology to improve the measurement accuracy used in OPC models. In um, MXP, or Metrology for Extreme Performance, we do image averaging and contour extraction, which allows us to uh, place gauges in many locations. The benefits of this are that by doing the image averaging, we can reduce the LCDU, which is present in the raw image, and which might be even larger than the error allowed in the OPC model. In addition, by creating a accurate contour representation of the shape, we are able to measure at all points around the shape instead of having to fit it with an arbitrary shape such as an ellipse. As you can see in the bottom right, the ellipse may fit at the X and YCD extrema, but it does a poor job of representing the actual shape of the hole, which looks more like a peanut. By averaging the image, we're able to extract a robust contour and make reliable measurements across the whole feature. We have applied this to MPC. I'm showing here an example of some images from an EUV mask with a tantalum absorber that were used for the MPC model calibration. It is a quite diverse pattern set, including lines and spaces, holes and pillars, line ends and space ends, as well as a number of features designed to investigate the behavior of lines in the presence of different pattern densities. In total, there were approximately 4,000 patterns, and this set was, was used to do the model calibration. To review the mask metrology methods, um, the traditional metrology would take an image of the SEM and then measure at cut lines uh, pre-described on the image. In a case of an array where there are many um, repeating structures, it's possible to average each of these CD measurements to get a more accurate representation. With MXP, we do averaging over multiple images and are able to extract contours where we can again <clears throat> extract contour based CDs um, but also we can measure EPEs at other points other than the cut lines. A further way of improving the measurement quality is to do further averaging Within the, feet, within the field of view to create a unit cell average, which has even lower noise in the contour. Using these measurements, we were able to fit MPC models, and we were found that we were able to improve the model accuracy by about 30% versus the traditional CD-based calibration. The improvements came from both the model and the metrology, um, with the majority of the improvements being uh, derived from the metrology algorithm. And I show <clears throat> here a result showing the, how the EPE distribution for space end structures uh, was improved by building the models using MXP contours. What you can see is that when we used a CD-SEM, the distribution of the errors was wide and also was not normal, indicating perhaps bimodal or other uh, measurement artifacts. With the MXP contour, we see that we were able to get a much narrower distribution and also that the distribution is much more normal, indicating that the re residual errors are distributed in a fairly random fashion. I'd now like to turn my attention to how these errors in the MPC, even with the improved model, are propagating down to the wafer. 
Essentially, what we want to do is to compare the measured versus the simulated mask contour. So MXP is used to extract the contours from the EUV reticle SEM images. And in this situation, we actually are not doing um, averaging. We are just taking the um, numbers from one mask because we want to look at the local variation and not just the average systematic shape variation. Uh, these um, holes were again chosen from the test patterns we showed previously. And then we were able to simulate the mass contour using the model, the MPC model, and the MPC correction that was used on the mask. Having the measured and simulated contours, we can now use a simulator. We use uh, one called FEMPLUS, um, which is part of an OPC package to simulate the difference expected at the wafer. So a more, more graphic um, visualization of that is shown here, where we start with mask data. We extract contours. Um, on the bottom, we have mask design, and we simulate the mask contour after MPC. And then we do wafer simulation, uh, called FEM, to compare the wafer contours. In this slide, you see on the left, the red curve or the red contour is the contour from the simulated mask. It's quite smooth. The blue contour is the, it is the measured contour from an individual mask feature. And it seems quite rough. However, when we simulate them on the wafer, you see that the roughness and even the corners disappear and we end up with two circles of slightly different radius and placement. By measuring radially around the contour, we are able to generate a plot shown on the right that shows the EPE difference between the measured and simulated. And the blue arrows show the EPE error and the red arrow shows the overall centroid error. And so for five different contexts within this array, we see that there is both a, um, a EPE error, um, but also that there is a local placement error, the red arrows, which is, is quite significant. Finally, I'd like to share some results on using contour metrology to characterize curvilinear masks. In this slide, we show our flow for doing contour to contour checking for a more complex pattern. The mask shown on the left uh, is, has contours extracted, as described previously. And then we want to compare the measured mask contours to the design GDS contours. To do this, we use a piece of software that's familiar in the OPC world. Um, called a litho manufacturability check, which allows contour to contour checking and a variety of other analysis options, such as uh, CD extraction, pattern placement error, area calculations, etc. Contour metrology can provide quantitative insights into manufacturing issues. Let's consider the case that we showed on the previous slide, where we have main features, which are shown in yellow, and curvilinear SRAFs shown in blue. One analysis that we can do is to look at the curvature of these different shapes, shown in this histogram. We see some interesting trends in that the range of curvature for the SRAF is larger than the range of curvature for the main feature. We also see that the curvature for the main feature varies from zero to positive numbers, whereas indicating a purely convex shape, whereas the SRAF um, has both negative and positive curvature, indicating that it has both convex and concave shapes. The animation on the right is a, a rather cute animation that shows a mapping of the curvature of the shapes to the spatial location. Um, and another analysis that we did, shown in the middle animation, shows an analysis of how the EPE um, varies with the curvature of the feature. 
and we see here a, a strong correlation between the curvature and the uh, and the EPE error. We also see that the orange bars, which represent the main feature, show less EPE errors than the SRAF. And so one conclusion that one could draw from this is that the, indeed there is both a curvature and feature uh, size dependence on the EPE and that this mask which did not receive any MPC probably would benefit from having MPC in order to fix these effects. I'd like to summarize with the main points of the presentation. Again, I believe that mass contributions to wafer EPE are significant and hope that uh, I've demonstrated that there are improvements in mass metrology that can help us to drive this correction. And particularly, I shared examples showing the use of contour-based metrology to improve mass process, mass proximity correction, and also to characterize the transfer of mask errors to the wafer. And finally, we showed an example of contour-based metrology used to characterize curvilinear masks. I believe that this contour-based mask metrology is really important for characterizing advanced masks and hope that this can become the standard in the future. Um, in addition, I think that being able to import these contours into OPC tools uh, or other simulators allows rapid quantification of these mask errors and especially the impact of these errors on the wafer. And finally, uh, in addition to my colleagues Adam, Tom and Max, I would like to acknowledge the work of many others who have helped in making these presentations possible, colleagues in ASML, in uh, NCS, uh, in IMEC, in Topan, and in Dynapon Printing. So with that, I'll say thank you very much for your attention. And uh, you can contact me at chris.spence at asml.com if you have questions that would like to follow up on this presentation. Thank you. <laughs>